I'm not like one of those actors that's always wanted to be an actor. How do you deal with all that new stuff, the feelings, the emotions, the decision making, all these things? This is what I tell people all the time. If you don't believe in you, nobody else is going to believe in you. Dude, I'm fucking bipolar. You're bipolar. The most hardest scenes for me was, of course, the bipolar. Every scene of that, from the hospital bed to the cop really being right there, because I even, I, like, I created that scene. That was my life. Don't sit back and wait. Just go out there and take what's yours and ask for permission later. Why are you wearing your sunglasses inside? Bro, you know I got a drip, bro. Then we go into the studio right now. Should YG, just, you about to get a verse? Okay. Should I walk in? Man, go in there, man. The same energy I got is how I get at Dickie, how I get at all my friends that I want to do well. Like, I just try to put a battery in everybody back because I know we need it. People crashing out every day. The show, Dave, everything that you guys put out there and created is the most beautiful work of art because when I watch that, I feel less alone. But the same mindset that I got today is the same mindset that I had 18 years ago when I first was getting on this journey. Like, no matter what, I'm it. This gonna be it. Ain't no plan B. This is plan A. Me and Dickie really best friends in real life. For those that don't know, you know what I'm saying? I've been knowing him over 10 years plus, and it's just basically just following us and showing us our lives as we keep on getting her new wiggle and trying to take over the rap game, TV, and music. Okay, all right. So. <laughs> all right, sick. Gata, I've been waiting to talk to you for like three years. Like you've made, you don't understand how big of an impact you've made on me and like everybody that has seen your work. Like you are like Oscar nominated. Like, is this like a, is is the show a documentary? Like, is, like how, how are you so yourself and how do you do that? Because like it is, it must be so hard, you know, to, put yourself out there and like be vulnerable in front of the camera. Like what's what's good? Like tap me in. Yeah, for know? sure, man. I definitely appreciate all your support and I'm happy to finally be here after the three year, you know, wait. But you know, as we've been working on the show, it's been three seasons that we've been working on. But uh, it's definitely not a documentary based upon our real life, me, Dickie, and you know, just the aspects of us both being rappers, chasing our dreams, him being a comedic rapper, me being more of a swag type of cool rapper. And then we link up and become friends. And uh, honestly, it's definitely harder to play yourself than you expect because I'm not like one of those actors that's always wanted to be an actor. You know, like there's a lot of actors that go to acting classes. They got five different coaches. They signing up for acting college. Like they got programs. But me more so, I was just thrown and thrusted into the position because me and Dickie are really best friends in real life. For those that don't know, you know what I'm saying? I've been knowing them over 10 years plus, and it's just basically just following us and showing us uh, our lives as we keep on gandering and wiggling, trying to take over the rap game, TV and music. Who is Gata? Like, who, who are you? Like, I just feel like you are the most, first of all, the most important character in the show. Like you, you really are. Like the VIP. the show. Yeah, no, you you really are. Like the the show, Dave. Everything that you guys put out there and created is the most beautiful work of art. Because when I watch that, I feel less alone. Like, and and so do a lot of other people. Like we we watch that show and we're just like, wow. Especially Los Angeles. Like the whole the whole vibe. Mm -hmm. It's like feeling like you're less alone is to make people feel like they're less alone is, is such an incredible thing um, no, and such sure. a beautiful creation of art. But like you, your character and, and what you put out there, that artwork is the most important thing because you tackle a lot and show a lot in, yeah. in the show. I talk a lot, man. I talk about my mental health challenges, me suffering from anxiety, bipolar, down to sex addiction, down to me not knowing my real parents and stuff in real life. So... My vulnerability came from Dickie. Like, he was the one that told me, like, yo, we know you the cool guy. We know that's what you're known for, like, just being a cool-ass motherfucker. But I want people to see a different side of you. Like, I want to show stuff about you that people don't know. So, like, my bipolar disorder, he made me share that. He opened me up to sharing that, and he really pushed me and encouraged me. Because at first I was like, yo, man, I don't know, bro. I was kind of hesitant. Yeah. But he told me, like, yo, my story is beautiful. You know, it's inspiring. It's going to motivate people. And that's what made me do it, Dave. Did. It and it did because I and like I said, a lot of other people like that are that are in my circle were watching this and we're just like, this is incredible, you know, yeah, like real, it's man. it's a huge pick me up and especially when, um, you know, like I'm aspiring, like I feel like everybody's trying to you know make make it at the end of the day, you know, nah, for and, sure, man, and to see the way that you guys 
like we're doing or just like you know certain scenes where like you guys get faded or like people like you know just it, all of that stuff it's like it's so real it's so raw and so real and I have not seen anybody really put out something that is funny cool because like you're cool you no, know what I mean sure. like you're you're cool so it's for like sure. to see you going through that and it's like that's real nah that's why I think people uh connect with me and Dickie so much because like number one Dicky, little Dicky. He raps about a small penis. You know, yeah. it's a joke, but also an insecurity at the same time. And then me, I'm rap I mean, I'm talking about things in my life that you don't expect to see a black man from the ghetto talk about. You know what I'm saying? Breaking down, crying in front of the world. So that's what make people um get the connection, is because it's number one, it's unexpected. And then a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, a lot of people are going through the same stuff. So that's why I think people really connected with me because it was like, damn, he was broke too. Oh, damn, he didn't know his mom and dad too. Oh, damn, he's bipolar too. Oh, damn, he does music too. Oh, like, so that just a bunch of things to connect to. <laughs> or still being like in the industry and like being, you know, cool. Like, there's, you know, up until like season three, you guys were getting like, you know, some people fading you and stuff like that, which is something that I feel like a lot of people think early on only only happens early on. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you guys show that it's happening all the time. Yeah, definitely, man. Like, you know, just always going to face new challenges, you know, inside the industry or no matter what industry you're in, you know, whether it's crypto, whether you do NFTs, whether you're a cameraman, whether you're in the sneaker business, there's always going to be challenges that you face and hardships. It's just life, you know, life is a gamble. It's just all about who's willing to play. Hundred percent. No, hundred percent. So real. what when you're filming and you're like opening up in those really emotional scenes, cause like you've you've made me cry. But oh, like man. in the way where I'm just like, I feel this. Like that yeah, you've you've made me cry before and I'm just watching it and I'm just like with the paired with the music, paired with the storytelling, it's just it's it's my favorite piece of art, like in the world. Man, and I appreciate that too. It's it's so raw, it's so real. And a lot like, of people still in their pajamas, man. A lot of people sleeping on Dave. But yeah, oh y'all gonna watch it. Dave, it's, FX, Hulu. It's the best thing it's the best show that I've ever seen in my life Man, and like I'm, I'm coming from the film industry and also like I started watching the show when I got into the web 3 space like to the whole everything that like I'm doing no nah, I just, respect you and salute you that's another reason why I'm here today is because I noticed three years ago that you've been grinding every day you've been a hustler you've been posting the content you know even if it's your belief and it's that's the world that you're in I respect the consistency I love the fact that you can go places and tell people about what you believe in. Like, hey, this is what I'm on. And then people start buying into it. Like, that's why I'm here. Like, I bought into it. Like, okay, she hustling. She got a platform. Boom. So that's what I push. Oh, man. So to see you grinding every day, salute to you. And oh, I hope thank I inspired you so much. You. I feel like this is an episode of, like, my own show of Dave. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. Like, nah, I, I wake up and I'm just like, oh, when somebody fades me or, like, when something, like, happens, like, that I'm just, like, embarrassed or maybe, like, humiliated. Or, I don't know, because cra crazy stuff happens. You I know what I mean? Day. Like Dude. every day, like cancel or that, like whatever it is, and Man. I'm just like, yo, they went through that, and I'm just like, okay, this is just this is like the Dave episode, you nah, know what I mean? Or sure. like when an LA influencer like looks at me weird, just doesn't treat me right. I'm like, they did this to like Gata and Dave, and nah, like, for sure, you're gonna go through a lot of stuff on your way up, you know. So that's why everything is about character. Like you gotta treat people good, you gotta be a good person, and you know it's all about. Uh, Charisma too. You can't be a dry individual out here trying to get noticed. Like all that nonchalant, super cool. I'm too good to speak. Don't work. So that's why I, people fuck with me because I treat the custodian with the same respect that I treat the CEO. You know what I'm saying? So that's just one of my mottos, man. Just just be a good person. You know? Yeah. So what are you doing? Like, okay, let, let's talk a little bit about like. Yeah, I know you brushed up on it a little on like where you came from but how did you first of all how do you know Dave how do you like where where did you come from what were you like doing before and then kind of like look at where you are now I mean like yeah, it's crazy movies man. coming like what this let's is look at just, the backstory we about yeah, to do a little backstory y'all please give me some lore for those that don't know about Gator here we go yeah I'm from South Central Los Angeles California to be exact mm -hmm. I never knew my mom and my dad, as I put out there, I was adopted by my auntie and my cousin, who I consider my mom and my sister. They my everything. I always had dreams of being an entertainer, a rapper. One of my favorite rappers is a female rapper. Her name is The Brat. She's so dope. I used to listen to her song all the time when I was a kid. So that's what got me into the music. She the one that made me really believe that I can be an artist because it's kind of discouraging when you see Ice Cubes and Snoop Dogs and Tupacs and Biggies. So when I seen a female swag and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get into the music. So I get into the music along with other things. I played sports growing up, basketball. I even skateboarded. I idolized 
skateboarders like Andrew Reynolds, Kareem Campbell, Tony Hawk. So I just always been a kid that just had my hands in a lot of things. And if you, as you know, South Central Los Angeles is just not easy walking the park. You know, like I was surrounded by drug addicts, gang violence. Uh, my friends trying to push me in the wrong directions to do what they do to get money. So being focused and growing up in the hood. It was a challenge, but my education and my dream is what made me stray away from the negative things. So fast forward until I get to high school, rapping and battling people, killing them at the ciphers, coming to school, dress fresh, you know, just being a cool, popular guy, passing classes. I meet Tyga in high school in the MySpace days. So I get a message from a girl. She's like, yo, I want you to come to my crib and meet my friend's boyfriend. His name is Tyga. I think it'll be so cool. So I go over there and meet him. Vibe out, boom, now we clicking, now we making music. We came up with a brand together, GED, it's on the back of this chain, you know, it's one of my beliefs, it's uh, grinding every day, getting every dollar, getting educated daily. That's my brand, I got it tatted on my forehead, Tiger got it tatted, Schoolboy Q's album just dropped, Blue Lips, he was one of our members, man, love all my bros. Uh, even though we're not as close as we are today, I still respect and support my guys from afar because I learned the whole music industry by being with Tiger. I was with Fall Out Boy, Gym Class Heroes, Katy Perry. I ended up getting three songs with Lil Wayne because I was on tour with Tiger for a decade. Long story short, me and Tiger stopped working and, you know, I fall off. I'm on the block. I'm back at mom's house. After going from Japan and having songs with Lil Wayne, I'm at the county building going to get food stamps, selling my bus tokens. So I fell off, but I still had the cool factor. I still had the resume. So I was type that would go back to places that I got discovered, like Melrose and Fairfax, pass out my new music, just try to get back in the mix. But like I said, it's all about being a good person. So one day... I get a call in the period of the time that I fell off. I get a call from Tiger's old manager, a text message to be exact. He's like, yo, I got this new artist. His name's Lil Dicky. I want you to come to the office, meet him. I went up there to meet him. He didn't like me at first. I was gandering too hard. Look, I had the fake cameraman, fake personal assistant. But remember, who we talking about here? We talking about Gator, who wants to be a superstar, who got three songs with Lil Wayne, performed at Master Square Garden. So he didn't understand, like, why is this guy coming in here looking larger in life than me? Like, so... Once he explained to me, like, oh, man, whoop -whoop, uh, this is my music. And then I'm telling him, like, yo, this is what I did. We started to mesh. And then he started to understand Gator's a showman. Like, Gator's a, a performer. Like, Gator's not just a cool guy. Like, he's a walking act. He's a billboard. So, boom, fast forward to today. Went on tour with Dicky, and boom, rest is history. Craig, that's my whole story in like, what was that, two, three minutes? You're good. It's like, you're good. I would have went on like 10 different days. You are, yeah. you are so good. But let's just good. say you got a bunch of stuff to work with, you know, for the edit. You know no, what no, I mean? yeah. Whatever you want to put in there, I gave you no, the No, everything. Everything. It's so important. Everything yeah. in there is so important. important I, I want to go back to um, the quote unquote falling off part. Yeah, this that is was something a down that, period. Like, a lot was... of people can't handle the fall off too. A lot of people fall off and never get back up, but only the strong survive. <laughs> like tell I, I need I need to go there because this is gonna help so many people because I'm in the, you know the content creator industry as well and I look I, I think sometimes I'm the only one and I'm just like I have this constant circle of like I'm on top I fell off I'm oh, on yeah, top nah, I fell you're off you're not you're not the only one we all go through that phase even Drake even like the biggest wow. artist Dicky goes through it I go through it actors go through it like at the end of the day when you're an entrepreneur if it don't feel hard then your life's not going to be easy once you make it. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to feel hard. It's supposed to feel difficult. You're supposed to feel like you're the only one. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt for a long time until I started getting on TV and stuff, and then I started getting the notoriety and the recognition. But when you're on your way up, man, you're not going to get that much support from people close to you. It's always going to come from somebody that you don't expect it. Like, I didn't expect Dickie to be a blessing in my life like that. Like, I didn't expect somebody from a different race, different background, to literally link up with me, become my friend, change my mindset, show me how to think his way and mix it with my way, and then now we best friends and we both successful. Like, I didn't see that coming. But that's what happens when you're on your path. So you gotta stay on your path, and all the people that come in, you're going to be able to know who's right for you and who's wrong for you. Like, I deal with that every day. I'm trying to weed people out because I know where I'm going. But I don't know where other people are going, but I know where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look at your life like that. You decide. You're a business. You're a content creator. So that's why I respect. You got your man back here on the production. So now you got to get your manager. You got to get your agent. Then you get your lawyer. Then you get your assistants. And then next thing you know, the whole world's on your nuts. So just stay on your path. You're doing the right thing. Like That's why I'm here today because I acknowledged you even back then when you reached out. 
Because, like, me, I check people out. Like, I ain't got time to be wasting time. Like, I, I'm getting straight to the source. Like, I'm so experienced. I know who's bullshitting and who's not. So I always knew that you was legit just by the way you post content. You're not out here just, hey, look at me. I got on a hot dress. I, you think I look cool? Like, dude, it's, you're doing more than what people expect from a, a pretty white girl, whatever your nationality is. Sorry, but, okay. you know, you look like you could be a lot of things. But, yeah, like, doing unexpected and consistency is what gets you there. Man, this feels so like I needed this. Like this conversation, like I needed it so much because I'm a hype it, man. I gotta you, hype you, you up. That's what I came here to do oh to turn this channel up. To turn subscribe now, y'all. Hey, subscribe right now. We taking over the metaverse. We taking over the oh algorithm. All that. You, you know, there's. I feel like you would actually really like the whole message on like I'm. We're in a digital revolution right oh, now. Oh yeah. Like what what I'm working on is like a little bit more than just you, you know what you see. It's it's a digital revolution in the sense of anybody you know like. All the, the crypto blockchain, it's anybody anywhere, no matter what their financial background, is entitled to a bank account. For That's sure. what I believe in. Hell because yeah. right now, if you want to open up a bank account, you got to go to the bank. You need an ID. First and foremost, you need an ID. It's a lot of things you need. You need, you need a bunch of stuff to get and set Not only up. do you need an ID, you need a social security card. You need a mailing exactly. address with a utility bill on it. It's just there so many go. things to keep you away from handling your business. To, to have ownership of your assets or to mm -hmm. just actually be recognized by something. So it's like with, you know, blockchain, it's like, okay, if, if you have a device that connects to Wi-Fi, which a lot of places you can get access to, sure. you can have your own, you can own your own assets. So there's a huge fight right now between, you know, these like, set, like the centralized authorities and like this other stuff on like, not giving this education to the masses. That's why it's like you see scam here, scam there, nah, like all of sure. that stuff. Because I was definitely, look, I ain't going to lie. When the NFT crypto wave jumped on it, because, you know, I'm a solo social influencer, a.k.a. whatever, celebrity, whatever y'all want to call me. But uh, I seized the opportunity to promote these companies, even if I didn't know if they were working yeah. or not. And I'm admitting that to everybody right now. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is a new type of currency. This is a new system. All I was doing and being is the person that's uh, supporting brands. If I see you hustling and you got an idea and you trying to seize the moment, I'm going to seize the moment with you. And I'm sorry for speaking directly to Kevin. No, break the fourth you know, ball. You know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, though, like, there's a lot of celebrities that don't even know what's going on in that world, but they're seizing the moment. They're trying to get ahead and they try to yeah. attach themselves to these things. That's why I came here and wanted to make friends with you because I know you take this world so serious. So if it ever does become a breaking point where crypto and NFTs catch up to the value of a real actual dollar in your hand, I'm getting all the information from you. You you <laughs> got me. No, there's a, no I'm, I'm sure. happy that we're having this conversation and like it will. I mean, because I, the I, I gave up a long time studying. No, listen, listen, <laughs> like. No, nah, you do. You are you are a student of, of the world. No, right? I am, and you're, but and you're, it's and you're just a like, teacher too. You're actually you're not just a student. I mean, we'll all we'll we'll all always be students, but you are a teacher. Like this right now for me is like huge. Like what you're doing for me, this conversation, or even the work that you put out. Like like I said, you've changed. Like I've rewatched the show like three times. Man, that's sick, yo. Hey, I suggest y'all <laughs> all go do the same. You have to. It's <laughs> it's therapeutic. Like it actually to to see other people going through similar stuff. It makes, again, makes you feel less alone. Like, and I know that a lot of people struggle with the loneliness factor. Like, I almost lost myself to loneliness and mm. feeling like I'm not a part of something. And, like, right, right, right. you know, that not having a community or not having friends, stuff like that. And watching other people go through similar things. Again, the mental health stuff. Like, I feel like, you know what sucks? The whole mental health thing became so watered down, watered down, <laughs> lame, and just like, like, it's just like, ew, cringe, you know? But the way that you, guys expressed it yeah. is the perfect Because we're, we're not pushing it on you like, hey, come check no. out this pamphlet. Here, come sign up with no, this no. link. It's kind of like, hey, listen to this story. See what this guy is going through who's obviously struggling. He's not struggling with problems like Kanye, but he's struggling with problems that the normal person could relate to. Yeah. So that's why I think people connect with minds the most because it's like, I'm not all the way at the top. I'm just right at a space where it's like, I can really relate to Gator. Like, he's really talking back to the fans. He's engaging. He's coming down, sitting on people's podcasts. So that's why I think people really connect with my story because I make, make people actually feel like they know me. You you do. Because, <laughs> like, when you walked in, I was like, yo, it's, I can't believe it. Like, I felt like I was part of, like, I feel like I'm a part of the journey and I'm a part of, like, the show and a part of your life. Because, I like, that's why I said, is it a documentary? Because it's like, I know that that is real. Nah, like, for real. That's, that's real. I that's know a lot so of it in there is 
you know, I know it's TV and whatnot, but like. Yeah, I'm a consultant on the show. You know, I'm a consultant. So that means like they use my ideas and I get to, you know, structure my scenes and stuff to happen in my life, you know. So that's what I love about that show. I never have to say exactly what's on the paper because they believe in my skill. They believe in my charisma. I got the Riz. You got the <laughs> W Riz 100%. For sure. Um, question for you. Was there ever a time where the show, like, what was, like, the most emotional or, like, hard to, like, talk about scenes or, like, mm, things that you had to... To be honest with you, the most hardest scenes for me was, of course, the bipolar. Yeah. Every scene of that, from the from the hospital bed to the cop really being right there. Because I even, yeah. like, I created that scene. That was my life. Like, yeah. when I happened in real life, I was really in a padded room for three days. They were sliding burritos under the door. I really had shares take me from the mom's house, my mom's house, and point tasers at me when I got to the hospital. So reenacting, reenacting that was definitely difficult for me. But also, it was kind of like easy for me to do because I'm bipolar. I was thinking about happy stuff and sad stuff at the same time. And I was just thinking about like, damn, look, it took me so long to get here. Then I started thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be rich. So all those tears of joy and tears of sadness was just coming out right there. Because I'm, 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 I'm the real deal. Like You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. not a like a actor that's a method actor, like where I listen to a coach. I just shoot from the heart, you know? So I do that with my music. I do that with podcasts. I do that with everything I do. So, yeah. And then another scene that was hard to do was season three where I'm at the hurricane. I mean, the hurricane episode where I break down in the Christian family's house and then the two girls come in fighting over me, dealing with too many girl problems and my friends are calling me a sex addict and then they don't understand how... I deal with abandonment issues that trace back to my childhood with my mom and my dad and why I really don't trust women and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, real shit that people can relate to. Go watch Dave. It is so, <laughs> like, I've watched those scenes, and those were the, the two that actually, like, made me, yeah. like, cry, you know what I mean, and feel like, wow, and just grateful to you that, like, you are doing this because there is no one, I feel like, doing this. There is no one doing this nah, for in sure. the way that you're doing this. I'm about to give y'all a little inside too. Ooh. Whenever y'all see movies and y'all see them crying and the tears come down one eye, they ain't really doing it like Gator. I'm really crying. You ain't got to see my fake tears and then cut the scene too fast. They let my tears flow because they know they're real. And you can't get that from no other actor. Not too many that I know. I didn't been around a lot of people. And I just feel like I'm one of the best, man. That's why I done did 14, 15 movies in three and a half years. You are. You are, wait. Yeah, wait. Talk about that. Yeah, like you're doing a bunch of movies right now. Like I saw you were just, you were just at a movie premiere. Like a lot of stuff is yeah, happening. Yeah, I got the movie called uh, Anyone But You, which is a rom com with Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell. Yeah, I got which is everywhere. Yeah, killing it. It's coming to Netflix real soon. But yeah, I got a lot of movies on the come up. I play a battle rapper. It's about a um, lesbian rapper. Her dad died, so she picks up his career and his passion. But yeah, a lot of movies, man. Movie coming called Not an Artist. I got another movie coming, uh, Young, Wild, and Free with uh, Sierra Capri. Man, I, I just love acting, dude. And then I got concerts coming up, too. Anybody in San Diego, March 30th, right before Easter, the day before Easter, I'm going to be out there turning up at the candy shop. Pull you up. You just released a new song, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call the Bank. Y'all go see that on YouTube right now. Woo! The views is going crazy, man. Shout out Juju on the beat. Lil Ju made the beat. That's Meg, the starting producer, and I got my boy Juan Money on there. But yeah, Call the Bank, I directed that video. I casted everybody in there. I had uh, my shorty playing the judge. I had my homie playing one of the correctional officers. But yeah. I just love production. You know, like, Lil Dicky changed my life, y'all. Like, he he make me not even look at stuff the same. Like, he be so detailed. Like, man, the truth is in the details, y'all. I feel like, I mean, you definitely changed his because clearly you guys come from very different backgrounds. And, like, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that him knowing you and meeting you changed his life and nah, his perspective sure. on everything because yeah. a lot of people don't understand that world and they don't have access to that world and like understanding what it's like and there's a lot of judgment that goes around on on both ends and Hell I feel yeah. like this you know friendship and collaboration is is huge for the world because nah, there's a sure. it must be a lot of like compassion and 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 like false narratives that we kind of like grew up with you know on both sides um and yeah, I, I feel like... Nah, for real, because, you know, we out here, you know, going against the average. And for those that don't know, that's what my name stands for, G-A-T-A, Gator, going against the average. And that's what me and Dickie are doing by bringing somebody like me from an urban, you know, community where people suffer from poverty. Then you got this um, financially educated, you know, 
kid that's well off from the suburbs. When those two worlds collide, it's like Larry David and JB Smooth. Shout out to the big homies, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Go watch that show. But yeah, uh, man, it's just a great thing. We showing diversity. We showing unity. It's a lot of people in my neighborhood that never had a white friend, you know, let alone a Jewish friend. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. I hope a lot of people follow suit and just, you know, start uniting with others because you really can change your life. Like, I, that's why I love traveling so much, too. For a lot of people out there watching this, listen, I love nice things. Everyone loves nice things. Cars, clothes, whatever, shoes, jewelry, whatever. But nothing is more valuable and holds more weight in your life than traveling. So instead of popping bottles, guys, on the weekends and chasing hoes, man, take a bro trip. You know, go to Japan, go to Osaka. But traveling is like one of the best teachers, yo. I love traveling. Like, I get so educated. It opens up new experiences in, mm -hmm. in your mind because, like, you are unlocking these, like, different chemicals in your brain because you're seeing something for the first time and your brain's like, wait a minute, do we know what's going on here? Left side goes like, I, I don't know. And then it goes to the right side and it's like, oh, let's create then what's happening here. Mm -hmm. And you have like that beautiful combination between like the left and the right. And you're just like, that. that's why that if anybody's like ever feeling down, you know, go do something new. Nah, for sure. Like me, I had to practice new things. Like I never was the type that would put on some running shoes and go outside and take a jog or a hike. But uh, shout out New Balance. You know, they changed my <laughs> life, man. They uh, gave me a deal, worked with me, made me a client. Uh, got me some trainers. They did a documentary, like, uh, Behind the Run with Gata. And I just basically showed how my mental health uh, was increasing in a positive way due to running and being outside and outdoor activities and stuff. But, yeah, shout out New Balance, man. Go watch the documentary. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love this. Like, this just, this makes me so happy to see. Um, okay, I'm actually just curious, like, what's a day in your life? Like, just, like, Regular day. Monday, regular day, Tuesday. Regular day. First thing I do, get up, drink some coffee, brush my teeth after that, clean up some dog shit. <laughs> Wait, then, do you check your phone? Like, I, I need, like, play-by-play -play on, like, well, what's I definitely, the vibe? Look, I definitely check the phone. When I get up out the bed, I'm, you know, checking the phone, see what email is coming through, see what the agents is talking about, see what, you know, SAG, the lawyers. So I check all my business stuff. Then I do a little... Social media run, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. See what everybody's checking on. See what everybody's <laughs> talking about. Go look at the latest trending topics. Then, you know, I start getting downstairs. Then I get my coffee, you know, greet my dogs, play with them. Probably take them on a walk. But as soon as I get up, I'm getting straight to it. Like, I'm like the type of person when I wake up, I'm in the mirror talking to myself. Like, I'll pace around my house like Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, and just be talking. Like, yeah, yeah they can't fuck with me. Yeah, this is yeah. this what I'm on. Like, this is what I'm doing today. Like, I'm shooting a video. I'm about to write a song. Like, I, I, I'll say my plans out loud just so I could actually do it. But that's what I do. I just get up in the morning, hype myself up, and just get to it, you know, and just try to keep on creating, whether it's TV, music, film. I'm just trying to be great, yo. I'm just trying to seize the moment, keep the stakes sizzling. Because uh, I always know where I come from, not too many people get in the position that I'm in. Only person that I know that's in the position that I'm in, where I come from in my particular neighborhood, is Ice Cube. You know, so I gotta seize the moment. I gotta come sit down. Gotta come holler at you. Gotta go talk to Vlad TV. I gotta get my stuff out there. Like that's what every hustler needs to do, yo. Don't sit back and wait. Just go out there and take what's yours. You know, I love that. And ask for permission later. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you just gotta go out there and get it. And that's just me living up to my brand. Because when I came up on my brand, GED, like I literally tatted it on my forehead so I could never forget. And so I could put myself in a position where it's like, you got to make it. Because a lot of people fall short by playing it safe, you know. But sometimes you don't want to see somebody play it safe. You want to see them go so hard and just to where they damn near about to crash out. That's how much they want it. So that's what I'm displaying every day. Is that the feeling that you had that got you through when you were in the falling off period? Like, go, I mean, it's an incredible, like, you have an incredible story. Same like mindset. Like, from A to Z, yeah. you know? And then to, to, not a lot of people can go from, like, touring with, like, Tyga to, like, you know, collabing with, like, Lil Wayne and, like, Madison Square Garden to, oh, my God. You know, broke like, as I'm, hell at my mom's house. That's at, what happened. Back, back to the, you know, again, I've been in similar spots. Back to the basement, you know? like nah, living, for real. And, and it's like... A lot of people would not be able to that's why only handle the, that. That's why only the strong survive. You know, my uncle reminded me that last week because I was talking about my uh, 
dad and how he was doing drugs and how my uncle was doing drugs and stuff. But what he was saying was he was mentally stronger, you know, than my dad, you know, and my mom. Like, you know, it's an unfortunate situation. But when he said that, that was a wake up call. Like, you know, you got to be strong. So the same mindset that I got today is the same mindset that I had 18 years ago when I first was getting on this journey. Like, no matter what, I'm it. This going to be it. Ain't no plan B. This is plan A. Gator taking over the day. So when I wake up every day, I always remind myself. I keep that memory of when I was a kid in my head, like knowing that I was six years old, won the 86 Camaro with a Rolex or whatever. Like I let my inner child just stay alive so I can stay on my toes. Because if I get too comfortable with the Gator that I am today, I could disappear. I could just be kicked back enjoying my money on the island or just waiting for checks to come in or opportunities, but I've never been like that. Like, my mom always used to tell me, yo, you got to go out here and get it. You can't sit up in my house and play 2K and smoke weed all day. So I still got that same mentality. It's beautiful. For You're real. so well-spoken. Like, Hey, I man. like that, too, for real. That's that ghetto brilliance. You, you ghetto are, brilliance. You know, you're amazing. <laughs> like, even the way that you brand yourself, too, and just, like, the, the message that you, like, put forward with your branding. Like, it's, like... Damn, you're just so effortlessly cool, but also like and, and and just real and like what I think like this generation needs, cause man, like we're like Man, we following the wrong people, man. Yeah. We we idolizing false idols and stuff, you know, like people glorifying other people lifestyles. Like that's cool. Use it for inspiration, but don't get caught up in the things that other people got going on because you'll be down a rabbit hole trying to be like them. You know what I'm saying? So like, for example, me being the person that I am, even with the artist, I already know in my mind, I can't be Wiz. I can't be, the, so I just be Gator. I got to be myself. So that's what everybody got to remember. As much as we like our friends and all of these celebrities, remind yourself, you're an individual. That's the only way you're going to make it is by being unique. Be yourself. So that's that's just me. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Like, please, I know you're, you're one of one, but need more people like you. Um, and And thank you for, like, putting your artwork and content out there because again like I'm I'm following you you know nah, what I mean I respect like, that too man cuz all the people that follow me and listen to me and I rock with them on a day-to-day -day basis and they took my advice and I take their advice look at them look at LD look at Tiger look at my people that's with me that I help work and get to the top and this is the same thing that I'm telling you is hot the same energy I got is how I get at Dicky how I get at all my friends that I want to do well like, I just try to put a battery in everybody back because, like you said, I know we need it. People crashing out every day. Yeah. It's sad, depressing shit going there, on every day. There's a huge epidemic, I feel like, with, like, our generation where, like, everybody is struggling mental health-wise. Nah, for Everybody sure. is struggling with, like, you know, drug addiction, mental health, like, all of this stuff. And it's like, whoa, because you look around and it's like, there's, we have a lot of access. Like, we have access in, like, you know. America or North America and it's like what's going on here like what's this like disconnect and um and you see it on social media and you're like how why is everybody so depressed like what is going on what what is happening well number one it's the economy and then you got to remember social media is the biggest downfall of the uh human society to me the internet like it's a it's a positive thing but it's also a negative thing. double-edged sword yeah it's like a catch-22 so a lot of people are just lost. Like, you got to think about it. A lot of people grab their phone just to escape the world that they're in, in reality. But when I put my phone down, all the hard work and everything that I put in, it feels just like social media. So that's how I look at it. Like, I don't even have to get on social media. I am social media. You get what I'm saying? Like, when I go places, the cameras is on me. Like, you know, yeah. when I go put my ideas out and go talk to these people... I'm worried about that. So I'll get to the social media and stuff later. Like, yeah, it's important. I got to post and promote and stuff. But I'm worried about my real life. Like, I dreamed about people doing great things in real life. Like, when I used to watch TV, there was no, I'm about to get on Instagram and just glamorize Jay-Z. You have to physically go to the concert. You have to physically walk to the store, buy the album. So that's the mindset that I'm in Always, because I'm just older. I'm more mature. Yes, I know how to, like, you know, uh, adapt to the new times. But that old mentality that I got from back in the day and everything that I learned is what keeps me thriving today. Like, that's the thing. You know, you can learn something from the 1950s, but it's still relevant today. So that's what people got to realize. It's not about 
everything that's happening now. Your past and everything you learned and everything that you saw before could really just shape your future. Like I always tell people, if I disable all my social media stuff, I've worked so hard that I'm still lit. Yeah. I don't need the gram. Yeah. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So like basically what I'm saying is people got to tap into real life, work, work real hard in real life. And then when you get on the internet, it'll be glamorous for you, hopefully. <laughs> I love how you talk about, I feel like it's like mixing that like ancient wisdom or like old teachings because I feel like we're all about this like new spirituality. Oh man, you just, uh, before and, I forget. Yeah, please. Ancient wisdom. Anybody out there just listening to this, here's a Chinese proverb. It takes 500,000 hours to become great at something. Not good. It takes 500,000 hours to become great at something. You know, so that's Beautiful. ancient wisdom. Yeah. It, it it is no again you are like this is the this is the best conversation I've ever had. Nah, you're, you're this is what so I do. Well I'm a professional. I like know. I want people to you feel are. good. Like you're on time too. Like you're like you're early. Like you are. You, you are you gotta just amazing. be on it, yo. I yeah. take it serious. Like I look at it like this. You got to treat everything like your last. Like this is your last edit. Like this is your last podcast. All you rappers out there, anytime you record. Act like it's your last song. Anybody making contact content, act like it's the last TikTok the video that you ever about to make. Like, put your all into it. So that's why I sound like this. That's why my uh, cadence is a little bit high. He might have to adjust the levels, but I'm just a passionate person. And I want everyone to soak up my energy and say, you know what? If Gator's thinking like that, I'm going to go out here and be the best whatever I want to be. Yeah, you know? no, I mean, I think it's incredible. Like, you were just on tour literally, like, just the other day, and, like, you're giving me respect. Like, c coming early, like, b being passionate, like, that is just, I really, really appreciate it. Man, no doubt, man, because at the end of the day, somebody got to believe in you, too. And this is what I tell people all the time. If you don't believe in you, nobody else is going to believe in you. So I see that you believe in yourself, so that's why I'm here. Because I believe in you. Because I see that you believe in yourself. So if people out here walking around with their head down, looking all iffy and not sounding confident, we ain't got time for that. We want people that are showing up on time, that want the job, want to make the content with no complaints. Like I told myself the other day, because I was dealing with some business situation. And I'm like, man, I got to remind myself, there's a million people in this world that will do my job with no complaints, with a way better attitude. So that's for anybody out there. Just know that you're grateful for the be in the spot that you in and be appreciative. That's beautiful. <laughs> and like and you're doing this like every day and you treat it like you said the last time wow that's that's amazing. Like I, I couldn't ask for like a better conversation and I know that there's going to be people listening to this that it's going to help them because I'm going to listen back to this. Oh yeah, we got to rewind this. This is for the archives, this is for the history books. Like a lot of people don't get this type of motivation. Like a lot of people get on the internet and they're hearing negative topics or just worldly things that are tragedies. The bridge fell yesterday. Kids are dying overseas. It's like, yeah, we could talk about all that stuff forever and ever, but what about the positive energy? What about the push yourself and go out there in the world and do something for you? Like you don't have to sit back and be on the internet looking at everybody live good and look at everybody go through sad stuff while you're just existing. Yeah. So I look at it like this, you gotta get busy living because we already exist, so live your life to the fullest. Existing these days is just not enough. Like waking up and breathing, that ain't gonna cut it for me. You, <laughs> like I need to be able to do shit. Yeah. What What's Gata at Gata's fullest potential? Man. What does that look like? Me and my fullest potential? Shit, I look like a ghetto Elon Musk or a <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Like I look like. Anybody that I ever looked up to that was a real hustler, Dame Dash, you know what I'm saying? Man, I just look like a person that is relentless, that won't stop. Shit, uh, Michael Jordan, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's who I am in my mind. Like, I want all the championships. I want all the game time. I want all the shine. Like, you know, so that's just me, a real competitor, and it takes everything serious. Like, no matter what it is, no matter how small it is, it don't matter if you're trying to work with me, and you got a shitty camera, it don't matter. My swag will make it look dope. Yeah. That's the type of person I am. We ain't got to shoot on the Sony Red. We can get it on the iPhone. I'm still yeah. going to make it look dope. I just believe in myself that much. It's kind of like people that say, oh, this is so boring or the, or whatever. And it's like, no, you're boring. Exactly. Like, you know? I feel like you could be in a room just by yourself and it's going to be lit. Dude, I don't need nobody around me to have a great time. And that's one thing that I learned is getting older and being more mature and more at peace with myself.
Because when you're young and you're trying to find yourself, you like having people around you. You like to turn up. You like the crowd. But sometimes isolation is a big strength. You know, you can get focused. You can get prepared. You know, you can plan. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Do you, do you have, like, closing thoughts? Like, I, I cause I, I know I said, like, an hour, so it's like, do you, do you have anything else? I feel like this is, you, you said the biggest gems. Like, I haven't heard anybody that's, like, as cool as you speak this way. Man, I appreciate that. It's true. Only gems I got is just remind yourself, y'all, breathing is a privilege. God put his toughest battles on his toughest soldiers. And if you're going through something hard right now, it ain't nothing but a minor setback for a major fucking comeback. So that's what it is there. New movie coming out next month with Bobby Lee, Johnny Knoxville, Theo Vine. And then, yeah, I'm always promoting me. Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Instagram. You know, I'm on Twitter. But, yeah, no, not even Twitter anymore. It was X. X now. Yeah, I'm on X. I'm on X now. I wish it's... it was called Twitter. I'm on X sounds like I'm on a drug. I know. <laughs> <laughs> or it sounds like something like not, But, yeah, you know. man, we, we uh, anything else you want to talk about, we, we can shoot it, man. I, I'm down. I, I love the platform. You're a great host, and this is dope. Respect. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, this is going to go to X. X, like, is my biggest platform just because there is that whole, like, digital revolution going on with everybody out there mm -hmm. um, on, on that platform with, like, the live social audio. Like, have you seen, like, Twitter spaces and stuff? Hell, yeah. They be on there talking and everything oh, yeah, and there's yeah. a bunch of people in there that would be dope we should do one of those one day a Twitter please, space that please. would be dope that would be amazing. That would like, be sick. It's it's like anybody can like come and contribute, and it, it brings this aspect of like citizen journalism, where like you know we can't rely on like the media yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know? need our own opinions and own voices. There's like deep fakes right now where there's like fake videos of like you can get like fake videos of like politicians and people and like news anchors like saying stuff, mm -hmm. and like it's not really them. Yeah, it's I know. Like AI. AI, yeah, that shit's crazy. The AI taking people's jobs on a daily, y'all. Y'all better start getting out here ten toes down before a robot replace you. Imagine there's an AI Gata. Listen, that AI <laughs> Gata would have to be bipolar. He would have to be cloned about two, three times because they ain't, nobody got more injured. No, than they me. can't. Nobody got more injured. They than can't me. do it. Yeah. Oh my God, unreplaceable. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> You're um, the best. You already oh know God. what it is, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Like literally watching the show, like got me here. Like it's been it's been getting me like through through these like past three years even like to this point because I was like oh I've been wanting to like launch this podcast you're like one of my first get you're like the first real guest let's get it y'all hey literally. shout out to all the previous guests before me man but <laughs> today's the day we going viral subscribe now <laughs> oh thank you so much thank you thank you so, and like please come yeah Twitter Spaces everything I feel like you could do so much and like actually change the world yeah with, I like, love talking I'll be know. on Instagram live just shooting the shit with people <laughs> yeah no you're amazing okay thank you man much love y'all blessings appreciate you thanks man,